Hello everyone, my name is Ivan and in this video I'll be showing you how I turn this photo into this. So let's get started. This shot was taken in Barguzin Nature Reserve in Russia near Baikal Lake. We were traveling there last summer. You can see that this picture is quite dark because it was shot early in the morning around 5 or 6 am. I was using a manual lens by Samyang, 8mm fisheye for Sony Nex. The aperture was set around 5.6 or maybe 8. ISO here is 200, shutter speed 1 60th, so we can freeze our water a little bit and of course I was able to shoot without a tripod. And the first thing I'll do here is to boost the exposure. This makes overall picture a little bit brighter. But still we can see that most of the pixels are quite dark, so here on the histogram we see it is located in the shadow space. So I will just drag this shadows part to the right so we can see our shadow slider is moving. So what we do is we just basically open the shadows. For this picture I will not go too far because it will become flat. And if then I will bring my blacks down, I will get two contrast picture. I don't want that. So I will go for shadows at around 60, maybe 50 even. Yeah, I think around 60, 70 is okay. And after we boost the exposure and open shadows, I can see that some parts of the sky are actually clipping. So what is highlighted with red now are just red pixels that became 100% white. I want to avoid this, so I will bring down the highlights. If I go further to minus 100, it will bring some weird halo here. I believe this effect is brought by 8mm lens because its angle is actually too wide, 180 degrees. So I will stop my highlights at around minus 55 and then I'm setting my whites. I hold the alt key on the keyboard and try to boost whites till I get some clipping again. I don't want the clipping to be here so I will not push it till I see the clipping. So around plus 14 doing great. And the same I do with blacks. Here when I push alt and blacks I already have some black points here. So I actually will go for plus blacks. Because for this picture I don't want to have totally black parts. I will also do some clarity, which brings micro contrast to our picture. Just don't go too far as it will distract the image. So around plus 15 is fine for my camera. Maybe the suitable amount for your camera is different, but for my I know between 10 and 20 it's totally fine. The same I will do with vibrance. What Vibrance do is it saturates the colors that are not saturated. So basically if we boost the saturation it will enhance all the colors we have here. But Vibrance does it more softly. Vibrance is a kind of smart saturation. Just one more thing I want to do is the white balance. Here we can see it is set to as shot. I want to try the auto. Auto brings some warmness here. I like it and I think I will go even further with warmness. So I'll stop at around 8000 kelvins. Then I'll also add some tint to balance the oranges. And now we are done with the basic corrections. Let me show you how was it before. For that I use slash key on the keyboard. Much better already. But what I don't like here is the greens. They are actually too acid, I want to bring down the saturation a little bit and play with colors. So I'll go to the HSL color panel. HSL stands for Hue, Saturation and Luminance. On Hue panel we have red color which we can adjust from magenta to orange. Orange that we can adjust from red to yellow and so on. So for every color we have a specified range that we can use. In saturation panel we can desaturate or boost some colors and luminance is basically how bright our color will be. For this landscape I think I will go minus saturation and greens. I will also play around with its color. I think I would like more yellowish for the greens here. I will also try to play around yellow to see what it does here. I see it affects the dead grass, the dry grass. 
I just think I would like to have the contrast between the dry grass and the juicy fresh green grass so probably I will put my green hues to zero as they were before. One of the key objects on this picture is a stream which actually was very cold so I want the water to look much colder than it is now. For that I'll try to get my aquas close to blue. But it doesn't seem like any change has happened, so I'll try to play around with blue. Yeah, that's what we need here. I'll also try to bring some saturation to the blues. Yeah, it definitely does the job, but now I see some purple artifacts here. So as I don't have any other purple or magenta objects on this picture, except for Hello and these artifacts, I will bring down the saturation of purple and magenta all the way. That looks slightly better, and as I don't have that purple Hello now here, I'll try to go down with highlights again. But still there are aberrations of blue color, so I will bring it back to 70, maybe 65, 68 is okay here. And another very important thing here is a bridge. It kind of leads our eyes to the center of the picture, so I want it to contrast with the water. And now it seems to be too cold, so I will use the brush. We will paint with the temperature, I put it at around plus 30. Make sure the brush is soft with feather at 100 and flow and density at around 70 to 80. And now we can just brush over the bridge to bring some warmness in there. Now I wanted to show the selected mask overlay just to make sure we don't brush on the water and all the parts of bridge are actually brushed. So here as we have auto mask enabled we are fine with the water just in some places I have a slight red color here. So I will push alt key on the keyboard and you see that the brush became with the minus here. So I can just erase the parts I don't want to be masked. And now I'll turn the mask off, the showing of the red mask. Except for temperature, I will also boost the exposure just to make it slightly brighter at 0 0.4, 0 0.3 maybe, yeah 0.4 is fine. I also want to boost the contrast, for this I can use contrast and blacks, bring them down. I'll also use some clarity to emphasize the wooden texture. Let's try what saturation does here, maybe it will be fine for the bridge. Yeah, I think it's very good. And I'll also add sharpness, I guess. Again, for the better texture of the wood. So what we do here in the brush is only applied to the bridge that we actually has brushed on. Okay, now I can click this done button. And let me show you how it was before the brushing. And with brush. Now it matches the center of the picture, this forest and grass, so I think it's a very nice effect here. So we made it to differ with the water. And here we are done with the brush. And basically we are done here. Just one final touch we can do here is the vignetting effect. The vignetting will darken the edges. So it kind of make us look in the center of the photo but not the edges here. For this picture I will think I will bring down the roundness so we make it more like square. Just because on this image the most distracting objects are here on the edges so we just want to darken them. And to avoid vignetting effect in water I will do the highlights up to 100. Not sure if there is a difference but just in case. Let us see the before and after again. Here is the before, here is the after. And let me show you what does HSL correction do here. So I will use this tumbler to turn off the HSL correction. The HSL toning we've just done here brings some dramatic look to our picture. 
So basically when we are doing a color correction, we only want to make as few colors pop as we can. You could notice that in movies there are usually two or three main colors in the scene and we try to do the same on our pictures. So on this picture we have few colors that we are using the most. These are greens, yellows, blues. And next on the luminance panel I will just bring down some luminance of the greens and blues to make our greens a little bit more dark and to make the water even more blue. So I hope you like my video. If you do, don't forget to push the like button, to share with friends and post on your social media. In the next video I'll show you how did I edit this picture. So subscribe if you wanna see it, hit that bell button if you don't wanna miss it. And here I say goodbye to you. See you in the next video.